Greetings pet lovers, Bridget here with First Street Pets and today we're going to talk about using psychic powers to find a lost pet. My apologies if the lighting looks more like a horror movie than a YouTube video. It's winter here in Northern California and it is dark during all the hours that I like to film my videos. So yes, I am working on my lighting. So the reason that I am making this video today is because when I started on YouTube, I did some research to see what content was already out there for finding lost pets. And since then, there is some good content, which I will share in the future, but there was also a lot of really bad content. And that concerned me because I felt like many people look for answers in video format. And if they're missing a lost dog or cat, they're going to look on YouTube and they're going to get some pretty crazy advice. So this is the first in a series of reaction videos. And this one is about using psychic powers to find your lost pet. So this particular video is a news interview of a woman who is an animal communicator. And here she talks about what she does and how it works. I hook up with the pet's thoughts um, I, you know, through visualization. Um, I ask them what's going on. They send me uh, thoughts. Um, and again, I'm picking up images from them. I'm picking up sometimes a scent, sometimes uh, a color. So it's whatever I'm getting from them. And then I give them messages back. Um, I send them visualizations as well. And you also have the ability to do that with people? Absolutely. Um, it's just, you know, telepathic communication. Well, the, the practical things are, you know, always have a, a, a tag on your, on your pet and microchipping. Okay, I appreciate that she does put some practical information in here when she talks about microchipping and having an ID tag on your pet. I thought this whole video was going to be just about the psychic stuff, but she does give some practical advice as well. So I appreciate that. What I need is a, is a photo of your pet. Um, that's helpful to help, you know, uh, link up, you know, as I said, through telepathic communication and to send a message to say, you know, one, are you okay? Um, you know, the second is, you know, do you know how to get back home? Um, you know, where are you? And when I say, you know, where are you? I'm asking for uh, landmarks. I'm asking for a visual of where they are. So this sounds like it would be really helpful because if you're looking for your pet, especially a cat, they're so good at hiding and being quiet that they literally seem to just vanish when they go missing. Whereas a dog, you'll probably see them running down the street or they'll get picked up by animal control. It's a little more visible when a dog goes missing that in that way they can be easier to find so it may seem like these kinds of visualizations may help the problem is a lot of this stuff is really general if you live out in the country you're going to see fields and trees and fences and buildings and i don't know and in my experience what i have seen and through mission reunite with various cases over the years we have seen that this can mislead people. There was a story that was told to me years ago, I didn't know this person personally, where a cat went missing and a psychic told the woman, uh, just like this, a description of where the cat could be found and it was out in a field in the country and so on and so forth. And so the owner really focused on looking in areas like that and when she was asked if she had checked at the animal shelter, she said, well, no, because the psychic told me the animal was out in a field. And therein lies the danger in relying on any one thing, especially something like a psychic visualization. You need to cover all your bases. If you're just focusing on this one thing, you're going to miss out on all the other steps you need to be taking. Your cat could be sitting at the animal shelter and that lady's cat turned out to be at the animal shelter. <laughs> Um, and you're just looking in, in other areas based on this information you've been given. So in that way, I don't see that it's really helpful. I see if you are focusing on doing a comprehensive search and notifying everyone in the immediate area and checking the shelter and doing all the steps that you would normally take, this information isn't really helpful in my opinion, because you should be covering all those areas around your home anyway. I actually got a call from a woman in uh, Arizona and her cat was, was missing. And what I did was I gave her a visual, of, you know, she sent me a photo of her cat. I gave her a visual of what I was getting. Um, she disagreed on my visualization because I was visualizing goats in the area and she told me that she had never seen a goat. 
This is interesting where she tells a story of an actual case where she helped someone find a cat or ostensibly helped someone find a cat. And it's interesting that the owner disagreed with her because she said there are no goats in my area, but she insisted that that was true. And we'll get back to that in a minute. I told her that her cat was within a mile radius of the home. Now, this information is not super helpful because most cats are found close to home. There are exceptions if they hitched a ride in a vehicle or were taken home by somebody who thought that they were abandoned. But generally, cats are found much within a mile of home and usually within a few blocks. So this is not a great revelation to give an owner. This is true for most situations. Wow. And um, she called me, but she, I gave her other landmarks. She called me back about an hour later and asked if I could fly out there to help her locate her lost cat because for the first time in her life since living in Arizona, she saw a goat farm. So I did go out there and we did successfully get her cat back. Now what she describes here is a classic example of confirmation bias. The owner was told that there were goats in the area and that the cat was within a mile of home. So presumably the owner drove around within a mile radius and found some goats. Now, if you live out in the country, you could probably do that anywhere you are. So it's just how our minds work with confirmation bias. When someone tells us something and then we see something that confirms that in our mind, we start to believe everything that they are telling us. So it doesn't mean that it's real or true. It's just how our minds work in, in believing something. Now, ultimately, it sounds like the owner found her cat, which is great, but it sounds like she was doing a search around the home, a really comprehensive search, and that this lady came out and assisted her in that in a physical search. So that ultimately was what found the cat, not any kind of psychic power or communication to the cat to come back home. Yes. The first thing you want to do, especially if, it, if it's a cat, you want to look in your, in your house. That's the first place. You know, places where you never think that they would go. It could be under a chair. Um, it could be behind a washing machine. Again, I appreciate that this lady includes practical advice along with her psychic powers, because this is probably what finds the cat. Now, in many cases, the cats are actually still inside the home or under the house or next door, or very close to home. So this is really good practical advice. So it sounds like she is actually helping people in addition to her visualizations and psychic communications. She's giving people practical advice. And in my opinion, that's what's finding the cat. I see a lot of people post flyers yes. when they have a missing pet. Does that work? It does work because uh, it just makes people aware that there is a missing pet out there. The only thing, though, is you have to be aware of that You know, people do want to help, and you could be missing a chihuahua, and they might have seen a German shepherd and call you. More good practical advice here. I will link my video on flyers and mailers in the description because this is a super important step along with posting on local social media like Nextdoor, not necessarily the general Facebook. And I will post that information in the description. One of the reasons that I saved this clip from the video is the little banner that pops up on the bottom that says leave flyers in mailboxes. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. That was what popped out at me from this section of the video. Uh, it is not allowed to put anything in a mailbox. It doesn't have a stamp on it. So if you do that, you may end up getting slapped with a fine or charged postage for all those things. Better is to, as I describe in my video, to either hand flyers to people or post them on cork boards like at the laundromat or the library. If you want something to go in the mailbox, there is a service called Every Door Direct Mail, and that is detailed in my other video where it, it the flyers are legally placed in the resident's mailbox. And you can cover a whole route, a whole neighborhood, a whole city in one day. So to learn more about that, check out my video, but don't put flyers in mailboxes because that is not allowed and you could be fined. The other thing is um, all these animal shelters, all these pets. They, that could oh, be where the pet is, right? Exactly, and you wanna call them because a lot of these shelters have people's missing pets whose caregivers gave up on them far too soon. So you wanna call the shelters, you wanna go there because you can call them and say, okay, you know, I'm missing, you know, a tan chihuahua and they'll say, okay, no, we don't have one. More good advice about the shelters. And I thought when I originally started making this video that it would be more of 
poking fun at things that aren't practical, but she does give a lot of practical advice here. So absolutely, shelters, if you call and make a lost report, chances are that they will fill it out, put it in a binder, and it'll never be seen again. So you need to be going to the shelters, you need to be checking their website. If they don't have a website or they don't post pictures, you need to be going down there as much as possible. So you can't rely on anybody else to look for your lost pet for you, especially busy shelter employees. Especially now, post quarantine and COVID, a lot of shelters have reduced staff, they've reduced hours. So it's even more challenging than before. So it is up to you to take the steps to find your lost pet. So overall, in my opinions about psychics, there's no doubt that there are things in life that we can't explain scientifically. I've certainly had my own experiences with animals and I have my own spiritual beliefs, but we have to separate that from the physical reality of life and of looking for a lost pet. If you want to pray or go to psychics or whatever, that's fine, but you need to focus your efforts on practical, physical steps that are proven to find lost pets. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for my other reaction videos, which will be about other topics like praying, meditating, and using the law of attraction to find a lost pet.